and he's live hey what's going on there jay chantalanxi here welcome to the ripple effect of healing um channel uh where we talk about self-care self-healing a little bit of spirituality um and we have a weekly show here on mondays at 8 30 p.m pacific standard time like i mentioned earlier my name is Jay Chantalanxi. I'm a certified emotion code practitioner, and I help people release trapped emotions and emotional baggage from their bodies. Um, I love talking about this stuff. I love talking about healing. I'm all about healing, um, and I'm all about the ripple effect of healing, right? Healed people heal people. So when you start to heal, the next thing you're going to do is start helping others to heal and create that ripple effect. So I want to welcome you. If this is your first time uh, catching the show, welcome. Um, so glad to have you here. If this is beneficial, please share, like, comment uh, on the videos. Like I said, I do this every weekend. I'm um, not every weekend, every week live on Mondays at 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right, so today uh, I want to talk about a specific topic today. And, um, you know, when it comes to healing, we always feel these emotions, right? emotions well, what are emotions how many emotions are there <laughs> right feels like we, there's a whole bunch of emotions and um emotions can be described as many things right um but e emotions are just energy right like tony robbins said emotions is energy in motion right when you have a thought and you're thinking about something that thought energy <clears throat> changes into emotion emotion energy and that emotion is supposed to signify your body to tell you what are you going to do with this type of energy that you're feeling right and then that emotion actually starts to create physical reactions right if you feel sad if you feel angry if you feel uh, joy right if you feel depressed then your body starts to react little small movements you might feel pain you might be hyperventilating, right? Each other after it starts from that initial thought. Okay? So when we're going through the healing process, when we're going through this beautiful journey, we go through a plethora of emotions, right? A lot of them. But in today's uh, video um, and topic, we're going to talk about the six basic emotions. The six basic emotions uh, cited and based on a American psychologist named Dr. Paul Ekman, right? He has been uh, just a little bit about him. He is um, an American psychologist and a professor at emeritus at the University of California, San Francisco, Woo, Bay Area. Uh, he he is he pioneered the study of emotions and their relation to facial expressions. Right? Every time we feel an emotion, we make a facial expression. When we're happy, we smile. When we're sad, you know, we frown. When we feel, when we are disgusted, you know, we make this kind of weird face, right? Um, so, uh, he's the study of emotions and the relation to facial expression. He is ranked 59th out of 100 most cited psychologists of the 20th century. Wow. Um, he conducted seminal research on the specific uh, biological correlations of specific emotions, attempting to demonstrate the universality, universal universality of discreteness of emotions in a in a Darwinian approach, right? So um, he studies emotions. He studies the emotions and the effects of facial expressions. So, like I said, these um, six basic emotions is uh, what he studied, and I want to share that with you. And um, I know some of us, you know, we we understand that there are more than six emotions which there is because kind of like you know the color wheel right there are primary colors which create other colors same thing as emotions according to his theory there's only six um basic ones and then it kind of branches out to make a whole bunch of other emotions there's even like blended emotions um there's uh um you know basic emotions blended emotions um there's also other types of emotions, you know, that are um, 
maybe outside as outliers of, of, of the list, but there's a whole bunch of them, right? And just to give you an example, just so you, you, can, see, you can see a visual, I'm just going to put it up here, you know, to let you see, bam. You see right there, other side, right here, right here, <laughs> right here, still getting used to YouTube, right there. You see, there's the six that's in the middle, and there's all these other emotions, right, on the outside. There's a whole bunch of them, right? So we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about specifically these six um, basic emotions and how that affects our overall health and well-being. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. So there's six, right? There's six. That's good, right? I mean, that list is pretty huge um, in energy healing. And, you know, with even with the emotion code, there's a whole bunch of emotions that we tap into when we tune into a person's subconscious to figure out and identify each emotion. But it's not as big as that list that you just saw. All right. So um, still, we still go through each emotion to find out, you know, how it affects our overall health and well-being. So the first, the first basic emotion, of course, is happiness, right? Happiness. Um, and this is what is, I think, the best emotion, right? Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to feel happy. Everyone wants to be in this state of, uh, you know, bliss, right? We're always chasing um, happiness, right? Because it feels good within us, right? And when we feel this emotion, we feel like we can do anything. Anything is possible. Um, you know, we're vibrating at a very high frequency, uh, even though it's fleeting, right? All these emotions, you know, they don't last forever, right? It may seem like that, especially with the, bar with the hard ones. But in actuality, you feel it for a, a certain mo moment of time and then... It kind of goes away and you start feeling other emotions. But happiness, happiness is actually one of the best emotions and the best things that we try to strive for, right? Everyone wants to live a happy life and feel happy constantly, right? Um, and, you know, another um, offshoot of this emotion is like, you know, joy, peace, contentment, right? This is like the those other, you know, um, outliers of this specific type of emotions. And according to... You know, Dr. Paul Eggman here, you know, you have different facial expressions related to this emotion, right? Um, the common facial expression is smiling, right? I mean, when you're happy, you smile, right? <laughs> That's a clear indicator and a sign that you are happy because you're smiling. And in your body language, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you feel? How do you look? And what, what, what type of message are you displaying um, non-verbally when you are happy? I mean, you feel relaxed, right? You feel... Um, you know, just, uh, you know, um, taking, you know, you, you, you don't feel so tense, you know, um, your muscles are relaxed, you know, you can, you just feel like you're in this very comfortable, you know, position in yourself, right. In your stance and uh, the way you move, right. Nothing is tensed up, you know, so that's the kind of body language and then your tone of voice too, right. When you speak, when you're happy, it might be very, upbeat you know very pleasant you know when you're speaking you're all smiling you're smiling from your eyes all your facial expressions happen so happiness is one of the basic human emotions and right and we display happiness very easily right we we, we do it by smiling um and according to dr eggman uh eggman here he says happiness has been linked to a ver variety of outcomes including increased longevity and increased marital satisfaction. Conversely, unhappiness has been linked to a variety of poor health outcomes. So, what does that mean? <laughs> the more you're happy, the longer you live. <laughs> right? Uh, but conversely, uh, if you're not happy, it can lead to poor health. And we all know that, right? When we feel depressed, when we, you know, um, feel down, uh, have a lot of grief it affects our body right opens up our immune system makes us susceptible um, because we're constantly putting our body into stress mode right um, and that's not a good thing so you know we try to you know continue to always strive to be happy um, and there's many things you can do to cultivate this inner happiness this inner peace in you right meditation is one of them um getting out in nature nature has its natural way that we have this kind of symbiotic relationship 
you know, uh, that, that nature, I mean, that nature, that nature, that nature it helps us feel good. Um, and we're definitely connected to it, right? That's why people like to go outside and take for, go for a walk or go into the forest, go for hikes, you know, walks on the beach, right? Listening to, you know, nature sounds, rain, ocean waves, right? It just makes us feel very peaceful and happy and content, right? So that's happiness. The second basic emotion is sadness, right? That's the opposite of happiness, of course. We get sad, right? Sad, grief, disappointment, hopelessness, um, disinterest, right? Um, and when we feel this type of sadness or sorrow, you know, there are many things that can express our sadness. Um, you know, of course, one of the emotions or one of the facial expressions or reactions is crying, right? When someone is crying, you know that they're sad, right? Um, their whole body just feels down, feels weighted. Uh, they look very um, dampened, you know, they're very quiet, not too open, right? We've all been there. We've all been through heartaches and insecurities and had our heart broken, you know, <laughs> once or twice or many, many times, right? The feelings that we get that comes with that heart heartbreak, you know, it's just very sad, right? We're just in this place of just um, wanting not to do anything. We feel lonely inside. We kind of withdraw ourselves from others. Uh, we don't want to connect anymore, right? Um, but sadness can definitely affect our overall health and well-being because the, the more sad we get, that can also lead to, you know, deep depression. And unfortunately, right now, you know, we're seeing a lot of that in society right now, right? Everyone is depressed. Uh, everyone has a lot of anxiety, panic attacks, um, especially with what's going on right now, you know, we have to be inside, isolated from others, isolated from our family members, you know, from our friends. It could be, it could definitely be detrimental, you know, to our health right now because, you know, it'll open, it, like, just like anything else, it can make us susceptible, um, break down our immune system, and then, you know, we'll be open to all these other things that can, you know, happen to us, you know, on a physical level, right? Um, and like I said, unfortunately, it is um, prevalent in today's society. And uh, we have to get back to, um, you know, understanding ourselves, right? Um, understanding how we can work through our emotions, specifically when we come to this uh, basic emotion of sadness, right? Um, and it's, I think we need to, you know, have some more conversations about it because, you know, we're just seeing it rampant right in today's society and, and 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 another scary thing is it's happening to younger and younger generations right um this this feeling of sadness and and, and depression so um sadness can often often lead people to engage in coping mechanisms such as avoiding other people right like just like, like i mentioned earlier we, we kind of like withdraw you know from from people our spouses our family members it could be from anyone we just want to isolate ourselves um we start to self-medicate right um go and get into vices um ruminating on negative thoughts and then you know behaviors can actually exacerbate feelings of sadness and prolonged durations of the emotion so the more sad we feel the more we're going to be ruminating in those negative thoughts and everything every emotion we feel comes from our thoughts so if we're sad and depressed, that's why it can take a long time to overcome this specific emotion is because we continually think about it, right? We're ruminating. We can't let things go. We just continue to feel and feel and feel. So what's happening is you're actually creating more of that negative vibrational energy, right, of this sadness. Every emotion has its specific unique frequency. Sadness is a very low frequency, right? So if you continue to feel it, you're going to be continuing to vibrate um, in this frequency and it might take you a long time to get out of it, right? Um, so it could be very troublesome um, if we don't know how to deal with this um, type of emotion, right? So that's sadness. The third one, the most powerful one, I think, um, is fear, right? Fear is an emotion, another low vibrating emotion, but fear has... You know, it's characteristics. It has its purpose, right? Some might argue that fear is needed, of course, um, to keep us alive, right? The fight or flight 
uh, reactions. Um, and, you know, back in the day, you know, <laughs> when we had to run away from lions and bears is that, yes, fear can keep us alive because we have to survive. Right. In today's world um, and in society right now, we pretty much fear everything. Right. We, we, we even have ac acronyms for it. Right. Like FOMO, fear of missing out. <laughs> you know, just because we're not included, we fear and we get so caught up. Um, in this emotion that it makes us pretty much go crazy, right? Um, and we feel this so intensely that it can make us do some, you know, incredible things, right? And anything gives us fear. Anything can give us anxiety when it comes to this powerful emotion, right? Um, and, you know, with this emotion, uh, according to Dr. Ekman, you know, facial expressions such as widening the eyes, pulling back the chin, right? I mean, we've all done that when we feel fear, right? Or experience fear. Um, and our body language changes, right? We kind of tuck away or we, you know, leave the the environment or the threat that we're experiencing at that moment. And then we also even hyperventilate, right? When we experience this fear, um, we start to breathe fast, right? We st our pupils start to dilate. We start to get afraid. Um, and that fear is real. And most times the fear that we're creating is coming from our, our minds, our brains, our thoughts, right? How many of you have experienced someone telling you a story or something like that, right? They're just telling you something and then your mind starts to wander um, about what they're saying and then the fear sets in so then your brain your your thoughts start to create this incredible story right and the story is so vivid and incredible that you start to believe <laughs> believe the story that you're telling yourself in your mind and then it's the fear sets in and then it leads to you know you not doing anything or you you know doing something um not you know serving you right or you don't even, you know, go anywhere, right? Um, I have personal experience with that, you know, um, a parent that is so fearful that they don't want to do anything, right? Take no risk, go anywhere. Um, their negative thought patterns are so intense that they have, they have, you know, a, a worst case scenario for everything, every event or situation. There's always a worst case scenario. And their mind goes from zero to a hundred like that. I mean, it's it's incredible what the mind can do when fear sets in, right? Um, and if we continue to experience this fear um, or situation, it could, it could lead to familiarity, right? Acclimation. And this one, it becomes a part of your character, right? A part of your personality, you know? Um, and like I said, I have firsthand experience uh, with this. And when it becomes a part of your personality, you know, and anyone can tell you anything and you'll go straight to the most negative thought ever, the most negative scenario. And then you have you create all of this anxiety for yourself. And most times it will never happen. Your brain just automatically goes there and then you make up this incredible story, you know, <laughs> and then you're fear fearful and then you start to feel all these emotions and stress yourself out right um and open up your body you know break down your immune system your cortisol level goes up you know i mean it's just a very powerful emotion if we continue to feel this you know they say they have that acronym it's a, a fear right um face everything and run right and rise or you know um what was the other one um, forget everything and run right? <laughs> or something like that. I'm, I'm, I'm probably saying it wrong, but, you know, we can either face the fear or run away from the fear. Right. And most of us uh, tend to run away um, because we're afraid and that's normal. But there's ways around this emotion and the, we can even utilize this emotion to motivate and drive us to do more things. It's just we need to understand this specific emotion, how it affects us individually, right? So <clears throat> um, the next emotion, that was three. The next one is disgust. So um, disgust, um, 
and with this emotion, people can experience moral disgust uh, when they observe others engaging in behaviors that find that they find distasteful, immoral, or evil. But some, you know, we feel this emotion when we kind of see things that you know um, really go against our values, our core values. Um, we also experience this when we kind of like taste something or smell something that's like you know pungent, like. You know, we can we kind of have this like facial expression, right? Um, you know, poor hygiene, infection, blood, and death can also trigger disgust response, right? Any of these traumatic events can also like make us feel this specific way. Um, anything gory, you know, if you can't handle it, uh, we 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 feel disgusted when we feel it. If we feel it in our stomach, right? And even our chest uh, kind of caves in because we're just so like you know, deep into this emotion. Um, and with the body language, you kind of turn away, you know, <laughs> we kind of don't want to even visualize or see what's going on. Um, physical reactions of this emotion, you can basically, you know, be throwing up and vomiting or, you know, <laughs> like hacking up or whatever like that because you're feeling this emotion. That's the physical reaction if this emotion is super intense for you, right? And of course, you know, the facial reactions, like I mentioned earlier, the wrinkling of the face and nose curling, like, you know, that's disgust, right? So it's more of a physical um, reaction to this emotion. But like I said er earlier, if it is, if you are experiencing something that's uh, against your morals or core values, um, you may be disgusted with that behavior. I mean, right now, that's happening right now with everything that's going on, you know, pre-election and all of these things, you know, I mean, uh, a lot of people are behaving in a way that can make them feel, you know, this emotion, right? Um, so, you know, just be aware uh, of this feeling uh, or this emotion. It is one of the, you know, um, six basic ones. So the next one, and this is the one I have a lot of experience in. Okay. I talk about this emotion a uh, lot and it is one of the basic six basic emotions and this emotion is none other than anger right anger Whew. every time i talk about anger it just uh brings back all of these memories i used to be a very angry individual right um it was a part of my character is a part of my personality uh, a lot of resentment a lot of bitterness frustration you know anger hatred even right um and we all get angry things make us frustrated thing things trigger us to feel this very intense emotion it's a very powerful emotion as well you know you feel agitated um you know there's a lot of hostility around it um you know but but kind of like fear, you can also use it, you know, to protect yourself, right? It's, it can also be a defense mechanism. But a lot of us, when we feel anger, you know, it's uncontrollable, right? We tend to get triggered and some of us even get to the point of angry that we even black out and we don't know what the heck is going on, right? And we say things out of anger. We say horrible things that we can't take back. Or we do things, you know, physical things, right? I used to punch walls and windows, you know what I mean? Um, just have adult tantrums when I couldn't express my emotions. Um, if it, there's going to be a, you know, a difficult conversation, I couldn't talk about it. It just came out as anger. But at that point in my life, you know, anger was already a part of my, like I said, personality. So um, everything was anything and anything can tip me off to make me angry so angry um you know i mean there's a whole bunch of different reactions right we have all these facial reactions our tone of voice we start to yell right we start to say vulgar things um and even you know the aggressive behaviors right like i said you know hitting and physical the physicality kicking throwing things you know <laughs> it's it's uh, um it's it's definitely you know one of those emotions right and I'm, I'm pretty sure um just me talking about it now you know brings up you know some of the triggers for you um and those times where you became super angry that it was even uncontrollable 
you know, for your, for yourself. And like I said, I've been there so many times, you know, <laughs> and thank God, you know, I'm not there anymore. Um, um, it's just when that, when, when you get to the point where it does control who you are, it just tells you there's a lot of things that you have to heal from. Okay. There's going to be a lot of things that's going to trigger you. And those triggers are supposed to make you realize what you need to heal from. And then at that point, you know, when, when you get to that point of feeling angry all the time, you know, it's at that point, it's just a mask for grief, for sadness. Right. Um, I found out that I found that out when I started doing a lot of inner work. Right. Um, I was so angry, but the anger um, originated from a lot of the sadness that I have, right, um, growing up as a kid. So um, look into that if you feel, you know, <laughs> if you uh, get uncontrollably angry or easily triggered, right, um, just be careful, right? It does raise your blood pressure, you know, when we get angry, it does have all of these negative effects on our body, cortisol levels raise up we get stressed out we can't think uh we black out we do things that we, we might even regret right like i said a very powerful emotion um anger has been linked to coronary heart diseases and diabetes what <laughs> um it has it's, uh, it has also been linked to behaviors that pose health risks such as aggressive driving alcohol consumption and smoking Right, road rage. I mean, we have a term for this type of behavior when someone cuts us off and we get so angry that we actually want to physically hurt or put ourselves in danger, right? Because of road rage. I mean, it's so difficult sometimes. I know, I know. But yes, anger. Anger is one of those emotions, those six basic emotions, and is very, very, you know can be very, very detrimental to our overall health and well-being. All right, last of the six basic emotions is surprise, right? We get surprise. Um, it's a it's a, human, a basic human emotion originally described by Dr. Ekman. Um, it's usually quite brief, you know. Um, we don't get surprised too often. And when we do, it's, it, you know, it's very fleeting. Um, it, the, the, it, this emotion doesn't stay with us for that long. Um, it's not like the, all the other emotions that can stay there, you know, time and time and time again, right? This is a quick, you know, instant, you know, emotion. It's kind of like when you get a, you want someone throws you a surprise party, right? It's like, oh, the initial surprise. And after your surprise, you know, it kind of rolls into happiness or, you know, um, joy or anything like that, right? It doesn't, this, this emotion doesn't last long. And of course the facial expressions, you know, we, our, our, our brows raise up, you know, we widen our eyes, you know, our mouth opens up like, oh my gosh, you know, like the surprise look. <laughs> we all know how the surprise look looks like, right? Um, and then, you know, um, as far as like our verbal uh, responses, you know, we might be yelling or laughing, you know, um, loudly gasping because we're laughing so hard or being so surprised, you know, <laughs> so. I've had a lot of surprises uh, in my life, you know, um, from friends and, you know, my wife who has uh, thrown some, you know, surprise parties for me and and they're great, right? Um, but this is one of those emotions that are, that's good. Um, and uh, surprise can have important effects on human behavior. Um, research has shown that people tend to disproportionately notice, you know, surprising events. So it's not that, you know, common, right? And um, yeah, those are the sixth the sixth, the six basic human emotions, according to um, American psychologist Paul Ekman, right? So to recap, happiness, sadness, fear, disgust, anger, and surprise, right? And then, uh, like I mentioned before, right, all of those emotions then have all of these outliers that are you know, related to those six basic ones, right? As you can see on this wheel um, right here, right? The fear, the aggression, you know, the, the anger becomes hurt. You can feel threatened, you know, um, hateful, mad, right? You see all of those different emotions just on the anger side. And then on the sad side, the happy side, right? 
I mean, this that's way more than six. And there's other studies that have shown, you know, that there are more than six basic emotions. I think there's a recent study that came out in 2017, you know, that talks about how there are more um, than, uh, you know, six basic basic ones. But I kind of want to talk to you guys about this so you guys can, you know, have more awareness um, and understanding of where these emotions come from and how it affects us and how we react with these type of emotions, right? And the thing about emotions is, you know, it's important that when we feel these emotions and from an energetic standpoint, we also want to honor our feelings and what we feel. Um, It's a great way to start the healing process when we do. Because most times when we feel an emotion, we can't explain how we feel, right? And if we can't explain how we feel, we tend to get frustrated or, you know, exacerbate, exacerbate that emotion even more. <laughs> and then, you know, you know, two days go by and we're just feeling depressed or feeling, you know, like we can't do anything and the world is against us. Probably fall into deep depression. So um, a good way to kind of identify what you feel is when you start to feel it, give it a name. Right. Um, and tell yourself, talk to yourself man, I feel whatever you feel, right? And express, write it out. Journaling is a good practice to have when you're feeling these emotions to, you know, help yourself heal, you know, through that energy, right? Because the energy needs to go somewhere, right? When you feel these emotions, the energy has to go somewhere. So that physical reaction of you feeling this emotion is telling you, all right, you know, you're feeling uh, overwhelmed. What are you going to do with this energy, right? Are you going to go for a walk? Are you going to continue to feel overwhelmed? Because if you do, I'm going to increase your cortisol levels. You're going to tend to get stressed out, right? You might even cry, right? So we have to do something with that energy. And the best thing to do is um, figure out what is best to help you when you feel those things, right? You have to create this sense of awareness. Um, And there's many things that you can do, right? A lot of outdoor activities, exercising, like I said, journaling, meditation, right? All of these exercises can help you become a lot more aware with how you feel, right? Um, And when you feel, you can actually uh, kind of uh, be more aware of the onset of that feeling, right? And just start talking to yourself, right? Or talk to someone about it, you know? Don't just feel it and then isolate yourself and then, you know, not do anything after that because the more you isolate, the more, you know, those emotions are going to be, you know, are, are going to come up, right? And you don't want to spend a lot of time because over time, that energy is going to build and build and build and build. And next thing you know, you're going to have trapped emotions. And we all don't want trapped emotions because we all know trapped emotions are not good for us. Okay. <laughs> so, um, That is it for today's episode. I hope that was valuable for you. Uh, Like I said, um, today's uh, episode was about the six basic um, types, basic emotions, um, according to American psychologist, uh, Dr. Paul Ekman, right? Um, So you can find out, you can go, you know, do some research and find out his um, studies um, and what he talks about. And I think it's a really good, Uh, foundation to understand the six especially if you know if you were like me (laughs) before going into this type of work you know I only knew of three emotions right because I was very emotionally unavailable or a term I used to use is I was or my wife would tell me is I was emotionally disabled right I couldn't even express uh, the things that I felt and when I did it would come out or it would be expressed as anger or frustration, right? So anger, frustration, and sadness was the only <laughs> emotions that I was you know, able to easily express. But, you know, there's six already here in the, um, you know, basic human emotions. And then, like I said, that whole chart that I just showed you, there's a whole bunch more. So um, familiarize yourself with it, right? Um, and uh, create more awareness when you, you know, feel those emotions, um, and, you know, it'll help you in your healing journey, right? Um, And, you know, if you need to talk to someone about it, please reach out. I'm here, 
All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. I just want to give some shout outs here to everyone that's here. Um, shout out to the Healing Tribe as always um, showing up here. Jessica, Martha, Sandra, Flo, how are you, beloveds? Good to see you. Cardoza, welcome, welcome. Angela Leon, Viana, I see you. Thank you so much, and thank you for leaving all the comments. I appreciate that. Um, hopefully, hopefully that was uh, very um, beneficial uh, for you guys. Um, Alejandra is here. Alexis, how are you? Good to see you. Angela Carnes, yay, awesome, awesome. Miss Fanny Pants, I see you. Awesome, awesome. Um, uh, who else here? Wendy, how are you, beloved? Good to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, um, and just to recap, um, if you are interested in taking a challenge, um, the uh, Heal to Succeed uh, self care challenge for these next 30 days in November is still open. I'm going to be closing the list on November 7th, right? So, you can still sign up. Um, you can just follow us or follow me on TikTok. I'll, I'll even leave a link below to sign up uh, or check out my past YouTube um, videos. There's a link there as well. And uh, what we're going to be focusing on is self-care, self-healing and mindset training for, you know, entrepreneurship or just doing, you know, going for your dreams. Right. Um, I think right now is an opportune time to do that because of what's happening we have a lot of time, um, you know, we're already isolated, right? So let's work on ourselves and, you know, try to do better and be better, right? And kind of look deep inside ourselves to see what we really want to do. I mean, you might come out of this thing, you know, like that butterfly <laughs> and just ready to take on the world and, you know, create that positive impact like you've always wanted to do. So with that said, like I said, thank you so much. Um, Stay tuned for the next episode here on the YouTube channel. Um, if, if this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel or share this if you think it's been uh, valuable, right? Um, I know everyone out there can use a little healing, right? And I firmly believe that no matter what you've been through, whatever adversity, tragedy, um, hurt or suffering or pain that you've been through, you can definitely heal from it. Right. And uh, I want to help you with that, because if I can do it, you can do it. All right. Sounds good. We'll see you again next week. Like I said, I'm here every Monday uh, from 8.30 p.m. Yeah, starting at 8.30 p.m. Right. Pacific Standard Time. OK, take care. Be blessed. Always remember to protect your energy at all costs.